You out there guys, this is Dale of Lone Lumber Airsoft and this is a video review of the East Midlands Airsoft Club in Grantham. Now I need to point out that this is a first impressions video review, I'd never been to the site before the day I'd actually turned up on, so everything I'm going to talk about in this video is based on my experiences of that day and that day only. And so with that in mind, we'll dive straight on into it. So the site's located on King Street in Grantham at the Ancaster Karting and Paintball site. Um, the postcode for the site actually dropped us off in the village of Ancaster itself, which is about just over half a mile away from the site entrance. Uh, you have to go a little bit further south than there, across the crossroads. And we saw signs for paintballing while we were in the car and thought, right, okay, hopefully this is the right place and we got lucky and it was. Um, once you actually turn up at the front of it, don't be put off by all the signs for paintballing and laser tag and go-kind. That is the correct place. Um, you'll go down this really quite open driveway space and the first turning on the left for the paintballing is the actual site entrance. There's a very small sign for the East Midlands Airsoft Club on the side of that. So turn left into there and you'll find yourself in the car park for the site. So prices for the day were £25 if you're not a member of the site and £20 if you are. However, it should be noted that if you don't fancy a full skirmish day, they do actually offer two, four, six hours slots. So quite similar to the way paintball instructions, if you don't want a full day, you just want a two hour experience of airsoft, you can pay for one of those and just turn up for that. We actually had that happen to us halfway through the day. A group of about 10 people or so turned up about halfway through and just joined us for the rest of it. Um, should be noted as well, that also affects the cost of the hire package, which ranges from £25 to £40, depending on how long you want it for and whether you want 1,000 or 5,000 rounds of ammo included with it. Uh, regardless of how much ammo you get, you still get the full face protection, a G&G &G combat machine M4 and a single high capacity magazine. Overalls are not included however, all the group that turned up on our day were just in their casual clothing. Um, so the safe zone itself is actually quite possibly the highest quality safe zone I've ever been in. The first impression of this place was really good when we actually turned up, it, it's hugely well presented. Uh, the vast majority of the seating is undercover so you don't have to worry about the elements. There's um, some of the seating on the outside of it though, and I say seating and not benches because they were literally just seats. Um, I would have liked to have seen some like like picnic table sort of things where you've actually got a bit of table space to rest your gear on, but uh, just a little minor nitpick there. Uh, tea and coffee is available for free throughout the day, however your walk-on fee does not cover lunch. Um, they went around with a menu at the start of the day and anywhere between two to five pounds you get a fairly wide option of things you can pick from. So um, depending on your price or what you fancy that day, you can choose what you want for lunch throughout the day. Uh, there are basic airsoft supplies available in the shop such as gas and ammo. Don't expect to turn up and be buying um, imitation firearms whilst you're there. It's just the absolute basic supplies. Um, they were doing chronograph tests on the site as well by giving away the little tags once you pass the chrono tests. And the chrono velocities for weapons are 350 for AEGs. 420 for DMRs that must be locked to semi-auto and 500 for bolt action rifles. There is a minimum engagement range of course for bolt actions and DMRs. Um, again though they're doing the tag system which seems to have become the standard for a lot of the airsoft sites which I'm actually really pleased to see. So what were the staff and the players like on the day then? Uh, well the staff were actually extremely welcoming when we turned up. It didn't feel to us like we were newcomers to the site, it felt like we'd been coming for weeks now based on just the conversation we were having with the people there, they were really inclusive. Um, same could be said with the players as well, we got talking to quite a few of them in the safe zone and there was a pretty generally good atmosphere on site throughout the entire day. Um, as for hit taking though, the first half of the day was quite poor, it wasn't atrocious or anything but it was below average the, the hit taking that was going on. Um, there were a couple of instances that I did quite clearly catch on my camera, including one guy who was just poking his barrel through some mesh netting, so just the barrel was sticking out so we couldn't do anything to him, and these are all things that I caught on my cameras. <laughs> Who's that, the guy at there? So he's shooting through that? Why am I shooting through that? <laughs> Centre mass, and nothing. How many hits can these guys take? That was on target, and he did nothing. Now, with all those uh, being pointed out, there is one thing I need to say on that, and that's that the performance throughout the day noticeably improved after this was raised with the marshals. Um, about lunchtime, we just 
uh, said to a couple of them that uh, we've been seeing this throughout the day. And after that, the gameplay notably improved because the marshals were just stamping down on it quite hard. So definitely credit where it's due there. They were actually putting the effort in to make sure the gameplay was better throughout the rest of the day. Also, um, speaking to some of my mates that are on site as well, they were having a totally different experience to me. Whilst I was running into some non-hit takers quite consistently, they were saying that it was actually really good. And watching the footage back, I get the impression that I just kept running into the same group that I was having trouble with. So um, that in mind, as well as the fact that marshals were actually able to enforce um, hit taking rules throughout the day once the point had been raised with them, is actually quite commendable. So what about the terrain on site then? Well, Emac is essentially a paintballing site, but one that actually has interesting terrain for once. Uh, the vast majority of the site is covered in these extremely steep, but overall small height hills that just undulate quite wildly throughout the site. And what this does is it really helps break up the terrain, so you don't just have to sprint through a tree and hope for the best, you can actually use the hills themselves for cover. It really divides the land up quite nicely. You can provide a lot of flanking routes from that because they block players from sight. And it just varies up the gameplay in quite interesting ways that you don't see on most airsoft sites. They tend to be quite flat. So you do get a real sense of momentum as well as you're traversing the site. You're just charging down these hills and going straight back up the other side of the next one. And as I say, the hills themselves can be used for cover. But there's also a lot of man-made cover on site as well. Um, as well as quite the thick trees they have, there's also a lot of wooden barricades, some really high quality structures, buildings, fortifications, that sort of thing, tractor tires all over the place, and even just some netting tied between trees. So the cover that's on option is varied and quite high quality overall. Uh, a lot of the buildings uh, tend to have like a first floor as well that you can actually go into and fire out the top of so you can gain a height advantage. And the site also has a couple of decent centerpieces, such as a large artillery cannon and a derelict APC. It's a visually interesting site, as well as one that's fun to play through, which is actually something that is quite rare and something that I really enjoyed personally on the day. So what about the game types themselves that are on offer then? Well, we started the day off with a simple attack and defend. Uh, there were three locations for the defending team to cover. Uh, they were on hit and dead for the first two, and then once they got to the final one, it was with a single medic and then taken out the game completely. Um, the attacking team would have to sweep the first site before moving on to the second and then the third. However, when they declared it clear, if there were still defending players still in there, they were then allowed at any point to just spring up and attack the attacking team from behind before going on to their next defensive spot. So although there wasn't a real defined clear restriction at which point the attacking team can move on to the second base, there was definitely incentive to make sure it was completely clear before they did, which um, was really quite, uh, made the game feel a bit more fluid to me because although the restriction is not there, you still kind of need to do it anyway, but depending on how well you do it, it's entirely up to the attacking team. Uh, the next game we played was uh, twin base defence. Um, both teams were given a fuel can with a smoke grenade strapped to the top of it. The idea is to get that fuel can into the enemy base, light the smoke grenade and then you've won. Uh, so the two bases, somewhat in the middle of the map, teams were starting behind the bases however, that's where their regen points were, and they could only access the middle of the map if they went through the bases themselves to get to that core middle part of the map. Um, what this means is that you do have quite a lot of freedom to go where you like, but in order to actually make any progress, you need to go through the bases and then attack the enemy base directly. So it kind of funnels all the players into the places they needed to be, while still giving them the freedom to move about if they want to. Um, unfortunately, some of the enemy team didn't quite get the memo about the restrictions for the midpoint and had actually gone beyond the site boundaries and were firing into our respawn point, which kind of put a little bit of a down on that for us. But conceptually, the game itself was really quite interesting. Uh, the next one we played was a single attack and defend game where defenders were on a limited medic until the attackers got to a certain point, at which point they would lose that unlimited medic and then go to one hit dead. Um, now, always I raise my eyebrows whenever there's a theoretically unkillable defensive team. It kind of robs the attacking team of any sense of progression or momentum, that sort of thing. Um, whilst there was an area they could breach and then the defenders would be on hit medic dead, um, that area itself was only about 5-10 metres outside of the main base they were attacking anyway. So once you've got to that point, you've practically won the game anyhow. Um, how I would personally improve that is expand the area that the attackers need to breach. Uh, a lot of the fighting was done over this bridge position in front of the main base. And if you had pushed that area up to there, once the bridge had fallen, then defenders won um, Medic and Dead. I think that would make the game flow a little bit better, be a bit quicker paced. 
Uh, the final game time we played was one where there were two crates hidden with uh, a load of test tubes inside them. You had to get these test tubes back, bring them back to your crate at your base, and whichever team had the most by the end of it was the winner. And the entire site was open to this one. You could go wherever you like. There was no indication of where these crates were, so you had to come the whole thing to find them. Um, from a personal perspective, this was really fun. It gave you unparalleled freedom to go where you like and do what you wanted. But from a gameplay perspective, if everybody went off and did that, no one would be defending your crate at home. So all the test tubes you recovered and brought back could then be raided by the enemy team if you weren't careful. So a little bit of coordination between the teams was still needed for that. So again, a very fun game. Um, what I really took away from um, the games that were on offer today is that a lot of thought had been put into them to make sure that they were fun to play in, quite fluid and had a decent pace to them. A little bit of tweaking here and there I think, but overall from a conceptual level the, the idea, the thought was put into these games to make sure they played well and it definitely showed on the day. So ultimately then, would I recommend a visit to the East Midlands Airsoft Club? Uh, absolutely, yes, in my eyes. Um, even though personally I wasn't doing that well on the day as I usually do, um, I could still tell that this was a really fun site to play through, the terrain was interesting, the game types have had thought put into them, so yes I can quite heartily recommend this one, I think anyone's going to have fun at this site. Um, I do think I need to clarify however why I, this gets a recommendation and Nomad did not, because they might be perceived as having similar problems. The reason this gets a recommendation is that, yes, hit taking was initially bad throughout the first half of the day, but once that point had been raised with the marshals, they've really put their foot down and gameplay notably improved as a result of that. They actually listened to the feedback and made changes because of it. Uh, second, the games themselves felt unique. It didn't feel like we were playing the same thing over and over, even though, for most instances, the site's relatively small, so you were playing over the same area, but you always come in from a different direction or with a different objective in mind, and so that made each game feel unique and individual, and that's what made them more fun to play through. So those are the main reasons why this gets a recommendation. Now, I do hope you've enjoyed my video review of the East Midlands Airsoft Club. If you've got any questions you want to ask me or feedback you want to give, just leave a comment down below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And until next time, this has been Dale of Lone Mobile Airsoft.